Hello doctors, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am going to be discussing the Williams flexion exercises. These exercises are also known as the Williams lumbar flexion exercises. They are a series of exercises that we can do to help our patients who are suffering from low back pain, especially when they are moving into extension. What we want to do is take the basic parts of these exercises and modify them to what we have found on the patient's evaluation through our consultation and examination. So we take these exercises and we modify it to what is going to work for that individual patient. Now the first part of the Williams flexion exercise is the pelvic tilt. Pelvic tilt is a very basic exercise to strengthen the abdominal muscles, especially the lower abdominal muscles. What we want to do is have our patient laying supine the hips are flexed and the knees are flexed and the feet are flat on the floor. All they're doing is shifting the pelvis when they contract the abdominal muscle. The pelvis shifts so that it moves towards the umbilicus. The front part of the pelvis moves towards the umbilicus. It's an isometric exercise. You hold it for six seconds, then relax, and then repeat. It can be performed up to 15 repetitions a day. The next one is a stretch for the muscles in the lumbar spine and the gluteal muscles and the hamstring muscles. This stretch can be done one side at a time or both sides at a time. It's recommended that you actually teach the patient to do both. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stretch, we're going to do the single leg stretch first and all we're basically doing is pulling the knee towards the chest. If I'm doing the right hand side and the patient is unable to have the left leg extended, the left hip extended, so that the left leg is flat on the table due to pain or tightness in the hip flexor, then have them flex the hip and flex the knee so that the feet are flat on the floor, and then grip the, grip the right leg and pull that towards the shoulder. And you want to relax the knee and have your patient hold the stretch anywhere from 5 seconds up to 120 seconds whatever time frame you think is going to work optimally for them. And then you switch and do the opposite side. It's a real good start to get our patients stretching. Then the next one is the double knee to chest stretch. Have the patient grip behind the knees. They can grip both legs if they want to or they can reach around and grab their own wrist like this. Don't want them pulling the knees together. And you stretch the knees towards the chest. If they can, without pain, have them try to lift the pelvis off of the table. That is really going to target the lumbar muscles and the gluteal muscles very well. If they can't, then just have them work through a pain-free range of motion like all the, all the other exercises. And also, tell them not to lift their neck off the floor. We, we want to keep the neck flat on the table. And hold a mild, comfortable stretch for 5 to 120 seconds, whatever time frame you think will work best for them. Now, the next, next exercise is the crunch. In order to do the crunch, the patient has to have mastered the pelvic tilt. So if they haven't mastered the pelvic tilt, have them continually work with that exercise. Once they do, then we're going to get going with the crunch. In the crunch, you could have them in this position where the feet are on the floor and the hips are flexed and the knees are flexed, or you can have them where the knees and the hips are both flexed to 90 degrees. All we're doing on the crunch is the patient holds the pelvic tilt and then arms are crossed in front. The chin does not raise. The neck stays in line with the spine. And the shoulder blades are lifted off the table. This will help to strengthen the abdominal muscles. Other exercises in the Williams flexion exercises are hip flexor stretch and then also a hamstring stretch and then the squat. If the patient is healthy enough to do the squat, 
have them do that. The squat can be done with the feet at shoulder width or a little bit farther out. If the patient has a problem with the lower extremities or if they have a balance issue, then we don't want them doing the squat. 